Very shortly, I will be off to Tokyo, Japan to compete in the 54th Miss International pageant. And I feel very privileged to be here this evening with Mrs. Solomon. Well, for those who know of Rukhaya or see or sees Rukhaya in the newspaper or on the internet, they know her as the beauty ambassador for Guyana. Uh, I've participated in the Miss Universe 2012 pageant. Uh, following that, I participated in the Miss World pageant in 2013, and now I'm pretty excited to go off to Tokyo, to Japan to compete yet again in the Miss International pageant, which runs up to three of the big four. So I'm pretty excited for that. I look forward to all the new experiences that I will have there. But apart from the pageant world, I'm pretty down to earth, laid back, dedicated, and passionate individual. I am. Um, I'm very high on issues surrounding domestic violence because that's a huge issue in our country, Guyana, and that's been my platform ever since I've embarked on this journey. Uh, outside of that, my name, it means charming, righteous, and advancement, and I think those are some of the minor qualities that I've lived up to or I've tried to emulate as I grow. Uh, and I'm pretty much, you know, the girl next door. You can come say hi. I'll never bite. picture I believe life is the thing that it motivates me the most uh, anything that comes under that spectrum be it a dog barking you know you'd be surprised at how much motivation you can get from just the sound of a dog barking because it might be a happy barking it might just light up your life the sound of drums that motivates me it feels like it makes me feel as if I'm connected to something music motivates me uh, children motivate me, to seeing children play in a park that motivates me. So it's really life and all that it encompasses. Uh, my team, uh, my Miss International team motivates me and that's a different type of motivation but in the nutshell, basically everything that when it comes together all in one and you look at the little things in life that matter, those are the things that motivates me the most. a brand new experience for me. I've never been to that side of Asia as yet. It's my third time visiting the continent as I've visited both Bali, Indonesia, and I've passed through Japan before. Uh, the culture is amazing. The people and their generosity is outstanding. Uh, just tailoring into the training per se, Goldian was the team that I trained with alongside the reigning Miss World Guyana because we fall under the same management. So we were both trained there for a period of two weeks. She trained a little longer than I because, well, this is her first international pageant in May. I would have had the prior experiences, so my training was not uh, as long. However, we underwent several training techniques. Uh, the Filipinos take pageantry very seriously, so that's why when I was asked to do this contest, I said to myself, you know what, I have to tackle it differently. I want to be fully equipped and prepared for this new venture. So I decided to go to the pageant capital per se. I know when we have Venezuela where they always win, or they always have their queens placing, and Philippines is another country where the queens always place. So I said, that's where I want to go. And we got with the team, we are there, uh, some of the aspects that they covered entailed makeup and hair training. Uh, we underwent the posture, the walk, uh, how to present yourself during the swimwear segment, how to present ourselves during the evening wear segment. We kind of got a few Filipino secrets as it related to how, relates to how we walk a certain way, how we can be able to look as if we're gliding. Uh, we learned the art of Paris Passarela which is basically um, like a Filipino walk. That's how what 
they refer to it as. We uh, underwent training for interview etiquette as each pageant, well there are big, four big four pageants and there's Miss International which is the third uh, largest pageant in the world, Miss Universe, Miss World and Miss Earth, those are the four big fours and for each pageant there's a different strategy, a different type of girl that's, that that pageant requires you to be. Uh, Miss International is very uh, Barbie like, more Barbie prototype, more soft, Japanese um, are more into like a softer woman, very delicate, very polite. So we went under, um, we underwent training that pertained to both of our pageants. And for me, I was taught how to adapt to Japanese culture, the ways of the Japanese people. And I learned a lot about the country and how Asians react to certain uh, disciplines. So I think overall, the training was very um, edifying. I learned a whole lot and I'm very grateful for Team Golding and all that they've invested. And I hope that the training pays off when I get to Tokyo. require a different type of girl, a different way you approach it. So in terms of what I've done differently, uh, I've, I've been to training and I've never been trained before Miss International, at least not that level of training. So that was one of the, the decisions that my team and I took upon ourselves. We were like, okay, Rakayo, we're going to have to try a different approach for this one. We, we, we want to bring it in, we want to make our country proud, so it's best to invest and go to a, a land that produces queens every year and learn their secrets and learn what is it, what is it that make the world want to crown their girls as queen. So I believe the training in the Philippines was one of the things that I approached differently. Uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, like psychologically overall, I think I'm in a different from a different position and a different place as a, as a, as opposed to how I would have been in Miss World. My frame of mind may have been different and as well as Miss Universe. Miss Universe was the first pageant so I was pretty inexperienced. It was my first international pageant so I really went with basically luck and just my personality. That's what I had going for me at that time. Miss World I was a bit more reserved and more prepared but the, the time frame to prepare between Miss Universe and Miss World was a little less. So it was a bit more of a pressure, but nonetheless, I, ex I enjoyed the experience just as much as I did Miss Universe. But this time, I had the time to become mentally prepared, uh, physically prepared, and then the training helped a whole lot. And the team that I'm working with are people that I've worked from, with from day one, so I'm pretty comfortable around them. And they basically motivated me to this day and allowed me to grow as a person. So I think I've grown a lot, I've matured a lot uh, since two years ago and I'm ready for it. I'm really ready for it this time. International pageant is different from all the other pageants. It's run by the Japanese and as it relates to the segments that it entails, there is the traditional evening wear segment, the swimwear segment, the national costume segment, but there's an additional international forum segment which I think is one of the segments that I look forward to a whole lot because it allows you to speak about a topic that you're most passionate about. I believe a theme will be selected so you speak on the theme. Uh, we'll, we will be more informed about it when we get there. So all the details I'm still speculating about but however uh, I know it allows you to speak on the platform that you're most passionate. So in my case I would be able to bring the issue of domestic violence to the forefront and I also will incorporate all the worldwide issues that I believe are affecting us as human beings such as uh, the health crisis that the West is experiencing, uh, issues such as the wars in the East, and I want to shed my own little twist on why I think what measures can be put in place to help stop these, these, these issues because they're really affecting us and we're losing our sense of humanity. So I think the International Forum is 
the one segment that will allow you to highlight the purpose of your your cause or the thing that the things that you're passionate or hurt from outside of that and a lighter note I, uh, I always enjoy the national costume segment because you get to highlight a little bit of your country uh, in this instance I'll be bringing forward a lot of gold I'm not gonna tell you just yet what it is but it's a lot of gold uh, and I think my sentimental favorite outside of talent which is initial reason as to why I started pageantry but outside of that, I, um, I look forward to the evening wear segment because that is the time when you get to shine and your lights, your eyes lighten up and you feel like a queen and you feel like, okay, it's a little bit, a little bit more and you're going to be crowned soon, hopefully, in this beautiful dress and I'll be wearing Leo Almodal, a Filipino designer, so I'm excited about that and I can't wait to see, have Tokyo see the little evening wear and how I floss it, so I think Evening wear would be my sentimental favorite, but I, I really think all of the segments make the pageant what it is, so I really look forward to all the segments, and there, there isn't a least favorite of mine that I would highlight. I don't think I have a least favorite. such rumors because uh, I have heard some, some some of those rumors but rumors are as you say and as you know rumors and I it doesn't deter me one bit it doesn't make me feel as if you know I'm at a disadvantage I am in high spirits and I think that it's a matter of preparation and that is what allows you to shine and with with all the all the preparation that I've had I'm hoping for the best and I I think that it would allow the organizers to see that you know this is a young lady with a mission and so when I think about rumors I think of things that happen every single day things that people a situation occurs and people just have their say and they have varied opinions and at the end of the day that is what it is but I believe in giving everything a fair shot and I think what Miss International provides is a forum for each person to have an equal opportunity to air their voices on a platform that we wouldn't have if it wasn't for such a pageant, such a prestigious pageant. So I, I, I have no doubts about them not giving me an equal opportunity alongside each and every contestant. It's about you bringing it and you bringing your A-game and you investing and showcasing to the world what you have within you. And for me, I, I just want to go out there and show my love and my light and bring excitement to the world, which is basically the Miss International Manifesto. Love, excitement, and goodwill. So, I have no fears about that. Uh, rumors will always be rumors, and I look forward to the best. National costume segment is definitely one of the anticipated segments for me. I'm going to be wearing what is dubbed as the goddess of the lost city of El Dorado. So I'll be bringing to the Miss International stage a lot of gold, not literal gold, but gold in the costume design. And it was a summation of three great minds, myself included, that came up with this concept. And the designer behind this concept is none other than Michelle Cole of Cold Facts. A lot of persons know her as uh, a person who designs evening dresses and uh, basically like swimwear and clothing lines but she's really talented in the national costume in the costume department she just had Lotus for the Labor Day in here in New York and she'll be showing her talent on the Miss International stage and I can't wait I'm really excited uh, basically the storyline the lost city of El Dorado well Guyana is known as the land of El Dorado, a lot of gold and minerals, and apparently uh, people forgot that. So I'm gonna let them remember come this Miss International when I light up the stage with that gold, amazing gold costume. I can't wait for you guys to see it. It's gonna be really exciting. Uh, well, I know that I haven't 
publicize as much my participation in this contest this year because I really wanted to focus on being prepared and all the nitty gritties that comes with that preparation. But I know for those who are aware, you can spread the word that you know what, I'm running Miss International Guyana so that when the voting is out, which will be out I believe on the 7th of November, I'm not sure it's the date yet, but I will keep you guys updated once that that voting is up and the link is out I would encourage you guys to hop on onto it and vote every single day for me because it is a critical part to the, the, the winning winning the crown and I think it's a, a basically a collective effort for any national representative to amass such a title of such a prestige so I want to um, encourage you guys to support that not just me but all the other queens that will be heading off to their respective pageants this year I am going off to the first one. I think Miss Earth will be off to the second one, um, Miss Guyana Earth, and that will be followed by Miss Guyana World in December. So I want to encourage you guys to support each, all of us and vote for us as the links are provided so that we can amass that the People's Choice Award, which adds to our final score. Uh, in addition to that, I know it's been a journey. This is my third international pageant, and some of I have some of the craziest fans, uh, some of the most loyal people that have been with me from day one. I want to thank you. I want to especially that. thank members of the executive com committee that I've worked with from the get-go since Miss World Ghana, uh, none other than Miss Natasha Martindale, uh, the director, and my personal mentor. She always says. You, all, you have to believe in you and you all, you need to work 10 times harder just so that you can make it for yourself and it's something that I live by. I, I, I always go the extra mile. I want to thank Miss Michelle Cole who's like my mother, my sister, my aunt, my everything. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do without her. Mr. Roger Gary, uh, he is, he's my stress reliever. <laughs> But he's amazing. He's always there to guide and counsel and give me new ideas and help me project. Uh, Mr. Andrew Harris, Miss Diane Madre. Oh my God, Diane is amazing, and she is one of the people who helped helped me along the way when as it relates to my my project and it relates to issues of domestic violence. She's an, a huge inspiration as it relates to anything to deal with social causes. Uh, there's so many other persons I want to thank. I want to thank Miss Patricia Langford, Langsford uh, of the Guyana Consulate. She is an angel. I swear to God, this woman bends back over to ensure that I'm equipped with every single thing that I need. And she would go to the ends of the earth just to ensure that I get it. And a huge thank you to Miss Pat, um, uh, the folks down in the Philippines, the Goldian team. Uh, my my counterpart queen Miss World Guyana Rafia, uh, all of my other queens that support this journey, uh, fans. I don't want to call if I start naming the fans, people are going to start getting jealous. But all of the folks, Missology Guyana, I want to thank you for all the exposure you've been investing for all of not just me but all of our queens. You guys have been doing an amazing job. Uh, continue doing an amazing job, uh, and I guess generally. Thank you, a huge thank you. Gratitude for me is more than, more than means more than anything. So I just want to say thank you to everyone, the media, the sponsors. Uh, I know there are some folks out there that are just as close knitted that I might be not be able to remember at present, but I, I thank you guys. I, I couldn't have made it here without you. And much love.